evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's uh, very nice to be with you, even though through this uh, remote connection. I uh, thank uh, Comrade Kazem for inviting me. Uh, I'm not an eloquent uh, speaker, especially from far distance, without having the uh, honor and ability to see faces, get uh, audience reactions to what I'm discussing. Uh, so I have prepared a statement that I would like to read it to you. And um, of course, after the talks are presented and completed, I'd be very happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, on February 1, 1979, only two weeks after Muhammad Reza Pahlavi, the former Shah of Iran, who had fled the country because of mass uprising, the triumphant Grand Ayatollah Imam Ruhollah Khomeini, the spiritual and revolutionary leader of Iranian masses, returned to Tehran after many years of exile abroad. With the arrival of Imam Khomeini in Iran, the subsequent establishment of the Islamic Republic, the Iranian revolutionary masses liberated themselves from the yoke of centuries of despotic rules and imperialist exploitation. With a deep faith in the will of God, an unshakable conviction in the divine providence and reliance on oppressed, impoverished masses, Imam Khomeini was the first spiritual leader in the world who practiced liberation theology. Imam Khomeini was a true revolutionary who clearly understood that now I quote him, only those who have tasted poverty, deprivation, and oppression are the ones who will stand with us to the end. Poor people and needy religious believers are originators of true revolutions and strive to uphold the revolutionary principles we should exert our utmost efforts to safeguard our principal defense of the poor with whatever means possible." End of quote. Not only Imam Khomeini strongly upheld an anti-imperialist revolutionary line, he also adamantly opposed anti-communist, red-baiting efforts of some members of anti-Shah national bourgeoisie pseudo-revolutionaries, political religious elements, and opportunist fellow travelers of true revolutionaries. Imam Khomeini emphatically declared, I quote, the individuals responsible for the Islamic system of revolutionary Iran should know that some God-blind individuals for the purpose of destroying the revolution would label anyone who wishes to support poverty-stricken masses, a communist, and a member of eclectic school of thought. We should not be fearful of these accusations and should keep God in our mind. We will spend the last drop of our blood in defense of rightful realizations of the rights of the poor in all all human societies. Our war is an ideological war and recognizes no geographic boundaries. End of quote. Imam Khomeini gave the mantle of Iranian Islamic revolution to Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of Islamic Republic of Iran. As a rightful heir, to Imam Khomeini, Ayatollah Khamenei, from the very beginning 
of his rule. As supreme leader, steadfastly upheld anti-imperialist revolutionary integrity, revolutionary principles, and vehemently safeguarded the national independence and territorial integrity of Iran. Continuing with the mass-based anti-imperialist policy of Imam Khomeini, the supreme leader Ayatollah Khamenei, in a meeting with workers declared, I quote, the force that will save the revolution consists of those barefoot deprived strata of society. The poor and middle classes created the system and defended the system, hence the system by depending on these same faithful and devoted people will last. End of quote. On Iran's independent foreign policy, Ayatollah Khamenei has declared time and again that I quote, the position of Islamic Republic regarding the logic of force and the dominance is very clear and transparent. People and government which in name of Islam and national independent identity have brought about the revolution will never surrender to the bullying of the United States, end of quote. After a decade and a half of law because of neoliberal economic policies during administration of Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani and Muhammad Khatami, this revolutionary t tradition reemerged by coming to power of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in June 2005. President Ahmadinejad's policy of economic justice, international solidarity with anti-imperialist and anti-Zionist movements, and countries, movement and countries formed the hallmark of this progressive stand on Iranian domestic and international affairs. President Ahmadinejad's social justice policies found their clear manifestation in income redistributive measure through his consumption realization program, mass infrastructure investment by government throughout the country, especially in the countryside and construction and sales of housing units at subsidized prices in rural and urban communities. Consumption realization program of Ahmadinejad administration involved eliminating of subsidized prices for energy, water, bread, as well as provision of direct payment to the public to compensate them for higher cost of purchasing these goods. The skillful, courageous implementation of rationalization energy price program led to the praise by the, by the program by Christian uh, Lagarde, the director of International Monetary Fund. In a letter to an Iranian authority, she wrote how she, I quote now, appreciated Iran's measure in reforming its subsidy system and called on other countries, especially the old rich state of Middle East, to implement Iran's model to carry out reforms." End of quote. Courage of President Ahmadinejad to implement the colossal energy rationalization program arises from his absolute resolve to undertake the reform, even though the previous administration had realized the necessity of the reform but had failed to remedy the problem. The administration of President Khatami had stated that it did not have the organizational capability to implement the energy rationalization program. The environmental justice dimension of this consumption realization program through the elimination of price subsidies should not be overlooked. The subsidized prices of fuel, electricity, water and bread had led to massive waste of scarce, exhaustible natural resources and increased environmental pollution. The economic policies such as provision of subsidized bank loans to small businesses, increased governmental expenditures for creation of infrastructure in underdeveloped regions, especially in remote isolated villages across the country, 
construction of over 1.6 million low, low cost housing units for villagers, with a 20 fold increase from rural housing construction in the previous administration. Construction of nearly 3 million subsidized housing for low income people. Provision of educational opportunities, especially college education, for millions of young Iranians. All have led to reducing disparity in income distribution in Iran during President Ahmadinejad's eight years of administration. Overall, industrial development under eight years of Ahmadinejad's rule is also impressive. Few statistics should show the substantial gains in President Ahmadinejad's industrialization efforts. A threefold increase in construction of major highways a two-fold rise in rural road construction, provision of electricity, natural gas, phone services, basic health care, and education to remote villages in the country, an 85% increase in capacity to generate electricity, the large increase in output of basic heavy industries, which are considered strategic industries for economic development and industrialization. The expansion of output in concrete, two-fold increase, the steel, 1.4-fold increase, an increase of 40 million tons of petrochemical products during eight years of Ahmadinejad's administration uh, are, by all accounts, impressive. Moreover, during Dr. Ahmadinejad's administrations, Gross investment in the economy increased by almost sevenfold. Export of nine oil goods increased by 150%. Human development indicator increased drastically. The advances in nuclear technology, nuclear technology capability in Iran during Ahmadinejad administration had a dual effect. First, these advances forced the United States government to reconsider its policy of no direct negotiation with Iran and ask the Supreme Leader to agree to U.S.-Iran secret negotiations over Iranian nuclear research. Second, the technological advances during admin, uh, administration of Dr. Ahmadinejad enabled the Iranian negotiators to use them as the bargaining chips during 5 plus 1 nuclear negotiations. During President Ahmadinejad's presidency, Iran's anti-imperialist and anti-Zionist foreign policy was manifested in resolute resistance against imperialist blackmail, sanctions, and threat of war on one hand, and establishment establishing fraternal camaraderie relations with revolutionary movement and countries. Dr. Ahmadinejad's policy of solidarity with oppressed people led to not only upgrading diplomatic relations with the revolutionary countries of Latin America, but also promoting establishment of people-to-people -people relationships between Iranian and, and Latin American revolutionary non-governmental organizations. Establishing the fraternal relation with late President Hugo Chavez President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela, President Evo Morales of Bolivia, and President Rafael Correa of Ecuador are examples of establishing anti-imperialist front by Dr. Ahmadinejad. The, Iran the Iranian revolution stands at the crossroads at this historical epoch. The outcome of ongoing struggle between the revolutionary line under leadership of Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei and the capitalist tendency and counter-revolutionary tendency of the clique under the control of Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani and their supporters, counter-revolution supporters abroad, which is taking place in the context of parliamentary and council of expert election, will determine the future of the Iranian revolution. Class struggling framework of upcoming elections will determine whether Iranian masses could continue with their progressive revolutionary path 
for maintaining national independence and achieving the goals of enjoying the higher standard of living by denying imperialists to plunder the natural resources of the country. No doubt, regardless of the outcomes of election, the anti-imperialist and class struggle of Iranian masses will continue. Long live the revolutionary principle of Iranian people. That's it. Thanks. Thank you for paying attention to listening to me.